I don't know if this is going to be a series because it doesn't happen that often, but occasionally the apple sheep strays from the herd a little bit and finds a tech product that he really likes and really wants, but is hesitant to buy and hesitant to pull the trigger on just because it's not from our Lord and Savior Tim. But I figured somewhat like an alcoholic admittance is a good first step, and in today's video I'll be telling you why I have a little bit of a liking for the Surface Studio. Let's begin. <laughs> I know, this may seem way out of left field and you're wondering why I'm talking about it, but honestly I'm just trying to kill time and not think too much about Worldwide Developers Conference where my dreams could be delivered on or crushed. So let's just think about something else for a second. In my opinion, the Surface Studio 2 is a really gorgeous looking product and I know the specs of it are not that great. In fact, probably the worst part about the Surface Studio is the price point for the specs you get because they're okay, but I know since it's running Windows, you get to compare it to all of your custom PC builds and in that sense, absolutely. It's not great for gaming, it's not really meant for that, and the hardware on it is particularly dated. I don't think they've refreshed it very recently, but that's all internal. Or the I.O., of course, is also not that great. But when it comes to the design, the idea of having a giant 28-inch display that is a touch interface, and anytime I've stopped at a Best Buy, I always try to walk by the Surface table because that's when I get to see the Surface Studio and play with it a little bit because the idea that you get to orient the display all the way to the ground and use it as this giant touch canvas and have this one uniform bezel all the way around and all your components are in this little base that's kind of about the size of a Mac Mini and you have these very polished aluminum casted unibody design that includes everything you need out of that product. So I'm a sucker for all-in-ones if you couldn't tell. You know, I'm a big fan of the iMac and I'm upset that the design of it hasn't changed in so long but it may be a dying breed and that's okay. I'll be the last one standing on this ship but I'm a big fan of desktops that are not towers, that are not super modular and have a bunch of upgradable parts and stuff like that. I'm okay with just having one machine that's beautifully crafted, made to look good, that has the monitor, the CPU, the GPU, the speakers, everything all built into one clean looking design. And I feel like part of the reason I'm a big Apple sheep is because Apple kind of has a monopoly in this sector. There's very few companies that make that many compelling or powerful all-in-one designs. And the Surface Studio 2 is one of the few out there that's not made by Apple that I think is actually really solid, in some ways better than an iMac. No, I'm not an artist, I'm not someone who does a lot of drawing, but the ability to dock your S Pen to the side of the giant desktop and use it for touch on occasion when you're drawing and basically just have so much room to work with that's also a desktop PC that can convert back into a keyboard and mouse experience. Like, I know I've docked Windows 10 a lot of times in the past. It's not my favorite OS, I'm happy if it works for you, but I've had a lot of experience with it and it didn't go well and I think a lot of it stems from Microsoft trying to make an operating system that works for keyboard and mouse users but at the same time has to be touch friendly and Surface hardware is probably the best way to experience that because they let you use a keyboard and mouse but also have a touch interface at the same time but if you guys remember my review of the Surface Pro or the Surface Go man those were years ago now but back then I think kind of the reason I had a hard time recommending them was because the tablet experience was so icky and not thought out and it just felt like they wanted you to use it with a keyboard and mouse anyway half the time, whereas Surface Studio isn't really a tablet. I mean, it kind of looks like one that's just blown up, but the experience isn't trying to rival that of an iPad, and in that way, I think it's almost the best way you could possibly experience Windows 10, because you have the giant display, and you've got some okay specs, again, not great, especially considering how expensive of a device this is, but you can use it for desktop type work, but also still have a two-in-one experience, which is not very common in the desktop world. Most desktops are like, nope, it sits at your desk and that's it. But Microsoft somehow found a way to make a desktop that can be used in two huge major ways. If you want to go all out on touch, you can with the S Pen and have this giant touch screen and feel like you're in the Avengers with so much room to work with. And at the same time, go back to normal by moving the screen back upwards. And I just thought that was really clever. And I have thought about buying one just to review for the channel. I'm not quite sure if I would keep it personally, just because I've had such annoying, frustrating issues with Windows. Windows 10 and driver corruption and software updates when I didn't ask for them that I don't know if I could justify owning one, but let's just say, Microsoft, I'm on the lookout for the Surface Studio 3 because that thing could be immensely more powerful if you updated some of those internal specs so it didn't have like laptop-like CPU and GPUs, and also update the I.O. because I think that's probably the weakest point of the Surface Studio. You got four USB 3.0 ports, which is fine, I guess, but what really bugs me is the one single USB-C port, and I don't even think it's Thunderbolt 
3, and that only allows you to support one 4K monitor at 60 hertz. If you want to somehow have two 4K monitors, which the website says it supports, I don't know how though, because there's only one USB-C port and there's no other Thunderbolt ports on the back, so I guess maybe through an adapter you could plug into the USB-C port and have two 4K panels, but if you do have two extra monitors on that thing, they would both have to be at 30 hertz, which is pretty low for a desktop monitor, so I find the I.O. exceptionally weak. In fact, that's a consistent complaint I have across the Surface lineup, is it's like, yeah, we have an SD card slot and we got one USB-C port, whereas I'm used to MacBook Pros, which have four Thunderbolt 3 ports, each of which can, you know, a monitor fast data transfer speeds and power at the same time. You know, the USB-C ports on the MacBooks, while the number of type of ports on the MacBook Pro, the fact that there are four full-speed Thunderbolt 3 ports allows for a ton of options, and you can plug in a ton of things to the MacBook that I can't see rivaled on many of the Surface devices, but if they updated that I.O., and if they updated those internals to be more up-to-date with today's specs and expectations of a device that expensive, I know, all-in-ones, they're always going to cost more than custom-built PCs, and there will be cheaper ways to get those specs with a Windows platform, but that's not why I like the Surface Studio. I admire it just from the simple standpoint of it's a gorgeous design, I love the idea of a two-in-one experience that's still a desktop, and they made something that can sit beautifully on someone's desk, and I respect that, and I realize that while I think about that a lot, I haven't really made a video just officially sitting down and saying, you know what guys, I like the Surface Studio too, and I'm a big Apple sheep, and I kind of envy it, especially given how we've had to put up with the same iMac design for like 10 years now, I'm hoping that's about to change, but looking at the Surface Studio, I'm like, you know what, I wish Apple would do something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to engrave, you know, the touch experience onto Mac OS, because I know Apple's against that, but imagine just for a second, okay, this is hypothetical land, but imagine if you had Mac OS on, you know, giant 32-inch panel with iPad Pro-sized bezels, very thin, very light, great I.O. on the back, just like the iMac Pro, but all of the components are stored in a Mac Mini-looking base underneath, and you can use Mac OS, but then when you want to swivel the display down, it converts into iPad OS, and then you can make video thumbnails, you can play games, you can enjoy a touch-optimized interface that Apple has designed, and who knows, maybe if Apple optimizes ARM CPUs for even the iMac line in the future, this type of technology could be possible, and we could get an Apple-branded version of the Surface Studio, but I know, wishful thinking, not probably gonna happen, but either way, I respect you, Microsoft. You made the Apple sheep drool on you a little bit. Anyway, am I crazy? Does no one else agree with me on this? Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter, join my Discord, if there's some glaring issue you have with the Surface Studio, and you're like, Drew, what are you talking about? This product sucks. Genuinely, I, I need to hear some reasons as to why this product is not good, because I'm kind of considering buying a used one or refurbished one just to play around with a little bit. And I would love any kind of reasoning to not do it, outside of, yes, the I.O. and the spec suck. I get that. But anyway, this is your Apple Sheep here, ironically, and I'll see you in the next one.